At the end of January 1865, uh, President Abraham Lincoln wrote a letter to the commanding general of the Union armies asking for a position for his son. It's a remarkable letter uh, and it's very short but it reveals a lot about Abraham Lincoln's relationship with General Grant, the commander of the Union armies, and also perhaps with his son. So the letter is dated January 19, 1865. It comes from the executive mansion, the White House in Washington. It's addressed to Lieutenant General Grant and it reads, uh, please read and answer this letter as though I was not president, but only a friend. That's the opening line from President Lincoln to General Grant. My son, now in his 22nd year, having graduated at Harvard, wishes to see something of the war before it ends. Now, Robert Lincoln, the son, who was in his 22nd year, had spent most of the war uh, at a private boarding school in New England and then at college at Harvard and then after he graduated from college at Harvard in 1864 he continued on studying law. He was going to become a lawyer. But now it's clear by January 19, 1865 that the Confederacy is on the verge of collapse uh, and the President reaches out to General Grant to see if there can be a, a place for him. He says, I do not wish to put him in the ranks nor yet to give him a commission to which those who have already served long are better entitled and better qualified to hold. Could he, without embarrassment to you or detriment to the service, go into your military family with some nominal rank? And then Lincoln adds something remarkable. I, not the public, furnishing his necessary means. This is a question that Lincoln is asking General Grant. He's willing to pay his son's salary if Grant will bring uh, Robert Lincoln into his headquarters staff, his military family, away from the front lines of combat without insulting the other officers around the general, but in a way that might let his son, quote, see something of the war before it ends. And Lincoln adds, although it's hard to know whether he meant this seriously. If no, say so without the least hesitation, because I am as anxious and as deeply interested that you shall not be encumbered as you can be yourself. Yours truly, A. Lincoln. Now first let's talk about the relationship a letter like this reveals uh, about the nature of things between President Lincoln and General Grant. It suggests that even though they've only been working together this closely for about a year, Grant was elevated to be commander of all the Union armies in the spring of 1864. They've somehow become, as Lincoln puts it, friends. He says, read this letter as though I was not president but only a friend. Uh, and the tone of the letter again and again seems to be one of a friend speaking to a friend, asking for a favor but trying to be delicate enough to allow him to say no. That's a remarkable thing because Abraham Lincoln went through several commanding generals of the Union armies, of the Army of the Potomac. He was very tough and demanding. As commander in chief, he fired a number of men. He didn't know Grant for the first half of the war. He came to respect him for his success in the Western theater of the war. And now at the end of the war, he has found his man. And this letter shows it. The letter also suggests something about the president's relationship with his son. We don't know exactly what happened behind the scenes with the Lincoln family. There are reports that Mary Lincoln was adamantly opposed to having her son join the army. The Lincolns had four boys. Two of them had died by this point, both as children. The most recent one, Willie, uh, had died in 1862 from disease. So now they have two boys left and Mary Lincoln doesn't want to lose either of them. Of course, for the President of the United States to ask hundreds of thousands, millions of other families to risk their children's lives, but not to risk his own, is something that people noted at the time. He was criticized for it. Uh, whether he was the obstacle, or his wife, or if Robert himself was the obstacle, we don't know for sure. Um, there have been, there's been speculation, movies have described this, novels, historians have tried to interpret, but the bottom line here is that none of us know for sure what happened within the family, although we do know that this letter finally produced a result. Grant did welcome uh, Robert into his military family. Robert did serve for the final few months of the war and he was actually present at Appomattox at the surrender from General Lee to General Grant on April 9th, 1865.